Good evening. Hello YouTube. Um, today we are going to talk about and demonstrate uh, HLSL settings for um, MAME to give a to give a uh, kind of a authentic CRT arcade monitor look to your MAME games. Um, recent times uh, a lot of improvement has been done to the HLSL settings of MAME and they're a lot better than what they used to be. And uh, one big feature that's been added recently, MAME, is uh, an even stretch um, Integra scaling option, which is basically uh, basically adds back in a feature that's taken out of MAME a good while back, which is uh, basically a pi it's basically a pixel perfect mode. Um, historically, MAME in the past has um, it, um, it displays the games so it fills the height of the of the screen it's been displayed on. Um, not all arcade games originally had the same screen resolution. Uh, so what MAME did is it just added in extra lines of pixels to these certain games so it caused them to fill the width of the screen. The only thing with this was it, it wasn't a, a proper one-to-one -one representation of, of the actual pixels that the uh, arcade board used to power to the monitor. So basically what this mode is it's just a pixel perfect uh, mode. The only downside to this is it just gives you slight balls at the top and bottom of the screen, but then the it will be a lot more authentic because it is actually what the um, monitor, uh, the arcade board used to power to the monitor. Um, so we'll we'll go we'll go for that as well. The first thing we want to do is um, this is a fresh this is a fresh install of Mame, the latest version of Mame. Uh, if we load up our command line and go to our Mame directory. And what we want to do is we want to make a MAME INI file. So at the moment there is no MAME INI config file. So we type in MAME 64-cc, uh, create config. We will now see that's created a INI file. We can now close this. And there's just a few settings we want to change in this INI file before we get started. First one being is our ROMs directory. My ROMs directory. Um, we want to, if we do control F, search for, um, uh, if we search for stretch, that will show us this, this pixel perfect mode, which is down here. At the moment, uneven stretch is, is enabled. So basically, this at the moment is stretching the screen, so it fills the screen. Uh, we ideally don't want this, so we're going to turn that off. Uh, also, while we're here, we want to turn sleep off, which is just here, because that just kills performance. On the lower end systems, it can, but it's always a good idea to turn it off because you don't want it putting MAME into sleep. Uh, the next one we want to search for is Control F again and filter. Search for that. Uh, basically, what this does, it just adds a, a smoothing effect to the screen. Um, we don't really want this, so if we turn that off. And while we're here, pre scale, I usually change this from 1 to 3. There's a scale of 1 to 3, 1, 2, and 3. Uh, basically, what this does is just sharpens up the image a bit more which I kind of like. And the finally, the last thing we want to change is we want to turn on HLSL. Research for that. As said, by default it is turned off. So we want to do HLSL enabled and also oversampling. We want to turn that on. Again, that makes the HLSL effect slightly sharper. If we save that, close it down and let's load up main. And this is one of the nice new features of, of the last, I think this came out a good while ago, probably the last six, seven versions of MAME. Even command line MAME now has a very basic uh, UI. So rather than using command prompt and uh, command lines to load your games, you can just double click on the MAME EXE file and it will load up this. Um, I usually select available rooms and up here we can select a game select. Uh, let's try Afterburner. So we're off to burn a team. Load that up. And what this does is it will load a default HLSL settings. That's that's I guess the uh, the developers main uh, decided on. Uh, it's not perfect in my eyes. I mean it's a bit it's a bit too oversaturated, a bit a bit too overblown. Uh, the scan lines seem too thin. So with a little bit of tweaking, we can get it looking loads better. And uh, as you see here, uh, with the 
uneven stretch pixel perfect integ scaling mode it's now uh, the screen doesn't feel the, the height for the screen it's slight borders at the top and bottom but you're getting a, a more authentic look of how it should look as in each pixel is one to one uh, if we push the title key on the keyboard which is uh, to the left of button uh, key one and just above the tab tab key on the keyboard that will bring up this this um, this uh, this little uh, settings menu for HLSL. We use the cursor keys to navigate this menu. But if we push up to go to the bottom of the uh, of the list of settings, and we want to keep pushing up till we find um, uh, bloom scale, which is there. At default is 0.35. I usually change this down to about 0 .0 0.18 to get rid of that oversaturated glare look to the screen. Uh, so that's one, yeah, 0 .1, 0 0.180 is a good starting thing. The next setting is this Phosphor Life, blue, green and red. Basically what this setting is trying to recreate is, um, what it does is basically it causes a trail behind fast moving pixels, sprites on the screen. Uh, you kind of did get this in our, on arcade monitors, but not to a very big extent that this setting would give. Uh, basically, it'd have to be like a, a completely black screen with a, a super bright sprite. And what it basically means is if that sprite was moving really quickly around the screen, it would kind of leave a very slight blur behind it. Uh, but the setting this is on by default is way too much. I usually change this down to 0 0.05 for both, all three of these settings. So now you won't get that, that trail behind fast moving sprites. Next one is floor blue, green and red. And uh, if we get to a screen where it's got a dark background. So let's add a credit that gives us a screen. As you look at the moment, uh, the black is kind of not black, it's kind of like a grey, grey, greeny, dull colour. Uh, if we change this to 0 0.02 for all of these settings, you will see that the screen is a lot blacker now, but it's still got a bit of lightness to it, which is kind of like an arcade monitor, because as soon as you turn that arcade monitor on, the, the tube is going to start firing light to the screen, which, which you know, by the essence of a, of a CRT display, uh, creates a, a glow to the screen. Even on a, on a completely black screen, you get a glow as soon as you turn that monitor on, which is kind of a replicates. Uh, the next setting is going to be uh, saturation. This is basically how bright colours are. I just change this to 0.10. Next setting is going to be defocus uh, on Y and X axis. So across the screen, they haven't added any defocus at all, and down the screen on the X axis, there is a slight defocus, which I don't kind of like. I want the screen to look a bit sharper, but not too sharp because CRT monitors weren't you know, pixel perfect, pin pin sharp. There was a slight defocus to remember slightly, and that setting recreates that. The next setting is scan line height. Now if you look on the screen now you'll notice that on the white text the scan lines appear a lot thinner than they do on the A and B of Afterburner. They're, they're, they're slightly thinner. Now if I turn this setting all the way down, wait till you get back to that screen again, the scan lines almost disappear on the white text almost to the point where you can't see them anymore. Basically if we set this setting to 1.40 it will make sure that the scan lines are the same width as they are in darker areas of the screen so you get a unified scan line width across the breadth of the screen regardless if it's in a bright area or a dark area. So scan line height rectifies that setting. Next one is scanline darkness, basically just how dark the scanlines are. 
0.75 is kind of one I like. It makes the scan lines just a bit, bit more pronounced. Uh, so if we start up the game, the next setting which is it, image vignetting. Basically what this does is if you look at the corners of the screen, increasing this kind of fades out the corners of the screen. Right, so the whole screen is almost dark. I kind of uh, usually set to 0 0.20, which gives a never ever so slight effect to that screen reflection. I don't I don't like that added to the uh, yep. What I kind of like to do for HL set, SL settings is cause a um, add a curved effect to the screen, so it kind of uh, mimics the older CRT screens because they weren't like this, completely square. They were kind of a, uh, that had a curve to the to the edges of the screen. Basically what these settings do is they add add that. I mean if you don't want to add that, skip these next few settings if you prefer what it is now, completely straight lined edges to the screen. But the first one is screen around corner and if you look at the corners now, it kind of rounds off the corners so they're not sharp. Uh, screen distortion is now going to bow the edges of the screen. I usually like 0.15. Uh, cube distortion put that to 0.03 and screen distortion to 0.15. Basically what this does is it just um, corrects the curving of, of, the, of the screen. Because um, at the moment if we didn't change screen distortion, either of those settings, the screen would still be completely flat, uh, but what this does is kind of curves the actual display screen as it would do on an old arcade monitor. Because as I said, um, older arcade monitors aren't flat screened. You can get flat screen monitors, but a lot of them did have a bow to them, they were curved. And last but not least, the final setting is Shadow Mask Darkness. Basically, this just applies, it's just setting determines how vivid the the shadow mask um, effect is to the screen. Um, basically this just is basically what made up shadow mask was uh, a part of a CRT display and this just mimics that to make it look more like a CRT display. But I think 0.35 is a bit too dark, a bit too too vivid for that effect so I change it to 0.20 usually. Make sure I just kind of knocks that effect off ever so slightly. And other than that, I think that's that's all the settings we need to change. Um, and to me that is quite a bit better than the default settings. Um, so there's not too many settings to change. Um, what I'll do is uh, in the description I'll cut and paste my HLSL settings and all you can do is you can cut and paste them and if you go into your main folder Inside there, there's a folder called I and I. Inside that folder, there's another folder called Presets, and inside that is a file called Raster.ini. Just open up that, and just copy and paste my HL SL settings over those settings, and that will apply. Don't forget to save it, of course. That will apply this, these settings to every uh, every game in MAME, every sprite-based game in MAME. So every game you load up in MAME will have this look to it. Um, other than that, I think that's pretty much it. As I said, these are just my personal preference. If you want to tweak some settings uh, to your liking, um, then, you know, it, whatever looks good in your eyes is what you think thinks best. Um, but I think this is just a, a better starting point to what the default HSL settings are. But yeah, if there's anything you think I've missed, uh, or anything you want to add, just uh, add them in the descriptions below. And uh, yeah, reply, like, and subscribe to my channel, guys. And uh, yeah, I'll catch you for the next video. I hope this has uh, helped a few of you guys out to get that more authentic arcade look to your main games. Catch you later, guys.